Hi, I'm Rydian, and today I'm going to show off a fully automatic sugarcane harvester. Now, unlike a lot of other farming machines in Minecraft, which are actually only semi-automatic, requiring replanting or a user hitting a reset switch, this is the first fully automatic farm that I have seen, in that it will actually farm, collect, stash, and well, it doesn't even need to need to regrow because it's sugarcane. It will do all of it as long as it's active, which means as long as it's within the loaded chunks. So as long as there's a player somewhere within the radius of the loaded chunks, which is pretty far in a normal Minecraft world, it will continuously stash up chests until it's full. And you can even hook up multiple hoppers and all that jazz to have it fill up multiple chests if you want. Um, the majority of the machine, minus the hopper configuration, can actually be used in the current versions. It doesn't need the snapshot. However, I'm in the snapshot, currently 13 week 2B, because I want to use the hopper to actually make it fully automatic. Now, this works based off of a few principles, and I'll go through them in order. The first one is a block update switch. I'm just going to go through this real quick. A piston, which is being powered diagonally, will receive power, but pistons are stupid and don't realize that they're receiving power until a block right next to them updates. For example, this. The piston realizes that it has power and that it should retract. So it can be a block below it as well. And that's how the sugarcane farm works. When the sugarcane grows, it causes the piston to realize that it's receiving power diagonally, and it pushes up. These are normal pistons. It pushes a sand up, which bridges this connection. Once all of the sugarcane has grown up, the connection is fully bridged, and whatever the hell you want happens. And, you know, after the sugarcane has been harvested, just hit the reset button to depower them for a second, and everything goes back to normal. So that's basically how this works. There's These are block updates, detector pistons right up here. They're being powered diagonally via this crap. And when the sugar cane reaches up, it'll push them up. Again, it doesn't matter which order it goes in. In fact, it can be all of them except for the first or the last. As long as all of these have been hit, it will activate. When the machine activates, it does a few things. First thing it does is push out all these pistons. And you can see that happening because when the connection is bridged, this wire receives power, which turns off the torch, which turns off this line of redstone, which enables all these torches down here to become powered and push these two sets of pistons, this upper row and this side row, out. And these two rows of pistons, the visible one and the invisible one right there, which are sticky pistons because they're dealing with blocks, will shove out the top two layers of sugarcane as if, you know, a person was harvesting sugarcane. They will hit this wall, otherwise if this wall wasn't here, they'd fly out, fall into the channel, and land down there where they get collected by the hopper and all that sweet, sweet playerless jazz. The second thing it does is... After a delay of two ticks, it cuts off the power to the pistons, so that the pistons get depowered and retract down after the sugarcane has been harvested. If these were to try to fire at about the same time, then it would just make some sort of weird infinite loop. Now, if you saw back there, you may have noticed that I'm not powering the pistons straight on. Here, I'm powering them straight on. Here, I'm powering straight on. Well, at least powering the diagonal space. But here, there's an arch. It's because I need to use a sideways set of pistons next to them. And for some reason, I don't know if it's just this version, or if pistons have always been like this, and I just didn't know for some reason. This configuration is now a block update detector. Not exactly sure if that's normal or not. But in order to get around it, I just had to prevent from powering this block. Now, there's two ways around this. I could use a repeater right here, because repeaters do not power the block below them like a line of redstone dust will. But simply arching the block up is cheaper, because it, it's still one block and one redstone dust. So I figured I'd go with that to be cheap. 
Um, as far as this line of repeaters, you don't actually need to have them all repeaters, you know, just in case you're building this in survival and you're running low on smooth stone or you don't want to smelt 84,000 stacks of smooth stone, you know, for all your other projects, you can actually make every other one into a dot of redstone and that will still work. Start growing these up. And as you can see, whoops, the first one, because I messed with it by breaking the line. As you can see, pistons push it up and the signal travels right through because repeaters will both push a signal into a block and pull a signal out of a block, so you can simply alternate. The reason I have it like this is, you know, for easily extending it if I wanted to. wanted to see how long it could get. I've added a few layers onto it. Um, alright, another concern you may have is that only every other, only every other line of sugarcane has a block update detector underneath it, which means that this thing could fire as early as 50% harvest. But that's not like it matters because what, you know, who cares if it's firing on something that's not even grown into that space anyways. You're still going to get, you know, the same amount of sugarcane in the same time, minus the very small amount of time where the piston is over top of it, in which case it can't grow. But that's pretty negligible considering you don't even have to touch anything to get every, everything into the hopper. And since I haven't actually harvested it, just to show that the hopper is indeed working in this version and will feed items right into the chest, um, suppose I might as well fire this thing once just to show you what happens when there's no wall. There we go. As you see, some of them land here, some of them get like yanked by the piston and fire off at incredible speed for some reason, and only some of them actually end up in the water, opposed to all of them just hitting the wall and falling down. So yeah, I'll put up a uh, small world file to download in the description.